Hey YouTube, Colorful Codes here. So today I wanted to bring to you all an algorithm that I saw in Leet Code Explorer under the dynamic programming section. Um, it's called climbing stairs. Uh, it's a very interesting question. We're going to be using uh, memoization. We're going to be doing a lot of recursion. So that should be really cool. I'm going to show you how to, I'm going to show you the concept of the algorithm and then I'm going to show you the implementation. So stay tuned. All right, so the question is asking us, given n, how many ways can we get to n um, you, taking either one step or two steps at a time? So in our case, n will either be one, two, three, four, or whatever the input value is gonna be. n is the staircase number that we are on. For example, if n equals one, granted we are on the ground floor, it would be, one step to reach step one. If n equaled two, it would be one, two. It would be two steps, or it would be another, another big two step. So those are our base cases. Um, we'll only be taking one, one step or two steps at a time. So for example, I'm gonna show you again. n equals one. Like I showed you, we can only go once, one step. One step. If n equaled two, we can either do one step plus one step or two steps. If n equals three, we can do one step one step, one step, two steps, and then one step, or one step, and then two steps. If n equals four, we can do one step, one step, one step, one step, so that's four one steps. We can do two big steps to equal four. We can do two steps, and then we can do one big two step, and then two one steps and then we can do one step, one step, and then a big two step. And it goes on, it will get bigger, I'm not gonna write out the rest of them, but this is essentially what we'll be doing um, to figure this algorithm out. Okay, so this algorithm is a type of Fibonacci sequence um, for example, if we're given the input of four, instead of calculating, trying to calculate, okay, how many steps does it take to get to four, um, we, all we have to do is figure out, okay, how many steps did it take to get to three, how many steps did it take to get to two, um, and then that's how we would get the answer of how to get to four. Um, so we're going to be storing everything in a dictionary so that we're not making the same calculations over and over. So we're going to be using a lot of memoization. So like I said earlier, one and two are our base cases. So right now I'm going to write the Python algorithm for you all. Yep. Let's get started. And things will become a lot easier. So we're going to define a function. Uh, we're going to call this climb stairs. Um, and it's going to take n. Before I finish, I just want to thank, I'm going to put the person's name down there, but I found this algorithm on leak code. Um, and that's the most readable one that I found. That's the one that I wanted to explain to you all. All right. so. In the, define, in, in, the, in the function, we're going to have our dictionary. That's going to keep the, val, um, the staircase values. So we're going to have this. This is a very ugly dictionary. And here I'm going to keep a visualization of the dictionary so that you'll, you'll all be able to understand it better. Um, and we're going to be using a helper function uh, because we're going to be doing a lot of recursion, and when we do recursion, we don't want to reset the dictionary over and over. We don't want to be recalculating each time. So we're going to have a function called helper. 
and it's also going to take n. So next we're going to have our two base cases. We're going to say if n equals 1 or n equals 2, we're going to return n. Okay, so next we want to see if we already have um, the value stored in the dictionary. So like I showed you earlier, we know that to get to four, it's, there's five different ways to get to four, but we don't want to keep on recalculating it um, as we get higher and higher and higher. For example, if n was seven, we don't want to recalculate um, the same value for four, the same value for five, six, and all that. So we're going to check if it's already stored in the dictionary n in store, which is the name of our dictionary, we're going to return that value. We're going to return store n. And then we're going to have our else statement, which is going to be the Fibonacci. Um, so within this else statement, we're going to have our store n. So if it's not in the dictionary, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put the value in here. So we're going to have a set helper. This is where the recursion comes in. Helper n minus 1 plus helper. Hope you can see this. Helper n minus 2. And then finally, we're going to return store n. And then because we, we have a function within a function, we're going to have to eventually return n. So return, this is the outer function, return helper n. So I'm going to explain this to you right now. All right, so if n were 1 or n were 2, we would get here, we would create a dictionary, and then we would hit here, we would return either 1 or 2. All right, base case is done. If n was 3, we're going to create our dictionary, we're going to reach here, and it won't pass because n is 3. If we're going to reach here, n isn't in the dictionary yet, the dictionary is empty, and we're going to reach eventually here. So n is 3 right now. I'm going to try my best to explain recursion. Helper, the name of our function, n minus 1. If n is 3 right now, n minus 1 is 2. Helper, n minus 2 is 1. We're adding those two values together, as you can see with the plus. With recursion, it's going to call the function again. It's going to call 3 minus 1, because remember, n right now is 3. It's going to call 3 minus 1, which is going to be 2. It's going to call it again. It's going to go here. And it's going to say if n equals 1 or n equals 2. Now that n equals 2, it's going to return 2. OK? So it returned 2, and then it's going to go to helper n minus 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1. Yeah, 3 minus 2 is 1. So it's going to call helper 1. And then it's going to be, if n equals 1, it's going to hit here and it's going to stop. And it's going to return 1. So then it's going to store, it's going to go back and it's going to store 3 equals 3, which is our steer, which is n. 3, this is our dictionary. And this is going to be the value equals 2 plus 1. So that's going to be 3. And then after it's stored it, it's going to return the stored value 3. And then in the, in the greater function, it's going to return 3. I'm going to show you a visualization um, if, if n equals 4. And it's going to help you understand it even more because recursion is pretty tricky. So if n equals 4, right? OK, n equals 4. We create a dictionary, 
now that we're starting over, the dictionary is empty. Now we're gonna go to helper. N is four, doesn't, it's, it, it, it equals four. It's not in the dictionary. All right, boom, we're here. Store N, all right, so I'm gonna put the, this is, this is the key right now, four, that's N. It's gonna call helper function again. N minus one, so N minus one is three, all right? So when it hits here, N equals three, all right? So now helper function equals three. It's gonna go here, it equals three. It's gonna go here, it's not in a dictionary. It's gonna go here, and it's gonna do the same thing again. It's gonna call itself, because right now, n equals three, it's gonna be three minus one. And so it's gonna call itself again, helper, n minus, n minus one. So, n, so now that n is three, it's gonna be helper two. So now, n is two, okay? Helper two with the argument. If n equals one or n equals two, it's gonna return two. Now that n is two, it's gonna return that. And now that we've returned n equals two, now it's back where it was before, n equals three. So we're done with this part. It returned two for this part. Now that n equals three again, it's gonna do helper n minus two. n minus two, in this case, is one, because three minus two is one. So it's gonna call helper one again, and now that n equals one, it's gonna say if n equals one or n equals two, return n. In that case, it's gonna return one. So now it returned two and it returned, I'm sorry, it returned two and it returned one. And that's what we're storing in the dictionary. So now we're gonna store three equals two plus one, which is three. Okay? And then we're gonna return store two. All right, so that's what we did. We, re we returned it and now it's in the dictionary. So we return the value and now n is back to equaling four. All right? So now n is right here. n minus one, which was three, and now n is gonna go to helper, so it's gonna be n minus two now. So now n is gonna equal two. So it went back here, n equals two, it reaches here, it's gonna return two. In the last function, we returned uh, the value for three, right here. So now what it's doing is that it's gonna do three plus two, and it's gonna store it in four. So that's gonna be five. I hope you guys understood that. Recursion is a little bit tricky. Um, yeah, and, and it will go deeper and deeper and deeper. I can, I'm only gonna do up to four because it will get pretty insane. Um, and eventually we return store n, which is the value of five, and then in the greater function, we'll return it. So the return value is gonna be five, if n equals four, all right? So hopefully you all found that pretty exciting. I tried my best to explain recursion. Um, hopefully the blog post, I'll be able to go more in depth because that's when I can really explain it the best. Um, so yeah, so let me know if you all have any questions. Um, feel free to give me any recommendations for algorithms that you want to see me uh, solve next time. <coughs> and yeah, stay tuned for the next video. Take care.